Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. In this video, it's not gonna be a very technical video, it's gonna be a video of business and how to start your own pen testing consulting firm or cybersecurity consulting firm or even your MSP or MSSP. It all pretty much goes hand in hand. So if you guys are new to my channel, please like, subscribe and share and welcome. So I wanna go through, obviously I started something called ISP Security and this is a firm that we do pen testing for small, medium sized companies and yada, yada, yada. And yes, I do have my academy, but that funnels through just, you know, my YouTube channel, my LinkedIn, my uh, Instagram and all that fun jazz where I post my InfoSec Pat content. But this one is going to be maybe a little rant, but like since I've started this, I talked to other people in the community and you know, I had an MSP business for many, many years. Not a lot of people know that but I did, so I understand that world. And just by pen testing, when you're pen testing for a company, you're just pen testing, right? You don't really know, you know, scope of work and all that other stuff that maybe the sales and the other people do, not us as the pen testers, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and go through the process that I came up with, and this is what I do, right? Everyone does their own thing. You know, I've seen people get inquiries from their website and inquiries through, you know, leads or however they do it. You know, this is my process and I want to share it, you know, and I think it's, you know, pretty cool. I, I think I came up with a pretty cool formula. So far, it's, it's been pretty good, um, pretty, pretty new, but it is what it is. Here we go. So the first thing, obviously, we have to get, you know, initial contact and how we're gonna get that if it's from my website form, if it's through email, LinkedIn, referrals, etc. Referrals are always the best. And what you can also do is reach out to local companies, go to your local chambers of commerce, go to local meetups, you know, have a fancy shirt on and have some business cards. I, I don't actually have my, I have business cards and I actually have something called DOT and it's a little business card and you can scan it and it populates all the business info which i thought was really cool because you know if i give you a business card you're probably going to throw it out realistically right like i have a bundle of business cards but some people just give you business cards and you throw them out let's be honest right i'm going to be honest sometimes i throw them out so you know the first thing you do is like maybe schedule maybe a short discovery call and i did take some notes maybe 15 to 20 minutes depending on how lengthy the engagement is and we're going to ask some high level questions right you know what kind of test do you want do you want an internal external yes you're like oh maybe they fill out a form and they give you that information the thing is when clients put their information into a form i do have a form i send out to clients but some people think they want a web app when they really want an external some people want an uh, api versus a you know, so on and so forth. So it really, really is good. It's really beneficial to actually get on a call and see what's up, right? So do you want an external, internal, web app, API, wireless, phishing, yada, yada, yada. And this is another one that I get, that I've gotten in probably the past two months, like cloud and internal. And people say, oh, I want an internal engagement, but then they have AWS, right? So they're thinking because the AWS environment is you know we, we 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 connect to the AWS environment through whatever VPN, and then we're yes we're testing quote unquote the internal of that network, but then they're like oh but I want you to check my permissions and yada yada yada, and it's like okay this is a cloud security assessment not really a pen test right so that's why that initial call is good, that's my rant for there, so why now right why do you need a pen test now. Maybe it's for compliance. Maybe it's an internal audit. Maybe they got breached. Maybe they launched a new application. They just want to get it tested. Whatever the case may be. So you, understanding that why is definitely a good thing. And like I said, this is my process, right? And what is the business goal? What are your goals? Is it to find real risk in your application, in your systems, in your internal network, and yada, yada, yada? Do you need to pass an audit? Do you need to be have a compliance readiness engagement, right? Uh, is it to test your blue team, right? Is it to test, uh, what is this? Okay, that's uh, nothing. So is it to test your blue team or your security tools that you have in place? 
right? So that's all the good stuff that is good to know on that initial call, right? So the next step is scope in the engagement, right? You want to get the scope. Um, there's two steps in, my, in the way I do it. There's two steps, right? This is like where we agree on exactly what we're allowed to test, right? And make sure you get that in writing because you know it, it can lead down a bad bad route. That's why you have insurance. Hopefully, you have insurance. But then think of it like a draw, like you're drawing a box, right? Around all your assets. Right, that you were going to test and say, you know, everything inside this box is fair game. You're going to go ahead and hack away, but anything outside that box, do not touch. Right, so that's because that's off limits. So that's pretty much, you know, how I try to explain. I like to use analogies. I'm an analogy kind of guy. Like I feel like people understand things better when you use analogies, because as you know, IT people, cybersecurity people, whatever, we tend to use acronyms and all these crazy things and. You know, your normal general person doesn't really understand that. And then we have stuff called NDAs, SOWs, and ROE. So you have an NDA, non-disclosure agreement, you have your scope of work, and then you have your rules of engagement, right? So this is your proposal, your pricing, and your contracts. And th this is pretty much scopes the objective of the engagement, the testing approach and the methodology. If it's, you know, NIST, if it's OWASP, whatever, however you want to word it. You have timelines and estimated hours, deliverables, right? Your reports, your presentations, your retest, your debrief, etc. And then you set your pricing. You know, it can be a fixed fee. You could do time and material, TNM. You can do per app, per IP. It all depends on how you scope it, right? That's, that's pretty much it. And then you wanna make sure they sign these three, right? You wanna sign the non-disclosure uh, agreement, you wanna sign the MSA contract and the rules of engagement, which allows what's, what's, uh, what's allowed and what's not allowed, and a God forbid emergency contact if you do blow something up, right? So that's pretty much that part. And then we get the kickoff and logistics, right? We wanna hold that, we wanna, you know, there's four steps in my in my opinion. Um, I hold a kickoff call with the client stakeholders. You know, we we confirm the different points of contact and the escalation paths, or the you know how we communicate. We're going to communicate through Slack or email or Teams or whatever. However you want to, however you want to communicate with your client. The testing window and time zone, because you know, for example, I'm in EST, and maybe you have someone in the West Coast or you have someone in mountain time or whatever, and you wanna make sure time, uh, time zones match up because maybe it's eight o'clock for me in the morning, but it's you know five o'clock in the morning for them. So you, you just wanna make sure you get that aligned up, uh, aligned up. And then the best thing, the most important thing in my, in my eyes is like, aside from all the legal stuff, is arrange the kind of access you have to the system. Right? Do you have VPN accounts? You want to test the credentials. You want to test the accounts with the specific privileges that you were that were meant to be given to you. Right? You want whitelisting the company's IPs on the firewall, the web application firewalls, IPS, IDS, and etc. Because especially if you're doing like a an internal assessment, you know, you want to make sure you have that internal access. Right? and we wanna make sure we have access to the subnets that we are testing, right? So that's pretty much that. And then obviously it goes the phase of, uh, once we have everything signed, now we start doing our reconnaissance information gathering, the vulnerability identifiers, like if you're gonna do automated or manual, you run your Nessus, Qualys, Rapid7, whatever you're gonna run. And, and what else? Then you, know, you do your exploitation within agreed rules, right? Make sure you do that. Uh, you attempt to exploit identified vulnerabilities, you know, grant initial access, bypass authentication, upload shells if you're allowed to do RCEs, and then, you know, exploit missed configurations. You can test for that. These are all things I test for, right? And I don't really talk too much about my process of what I do behind the scenes on, on the internet. There's reasons behind that, but I'll keep that to myself. And then obviously stick within your rules of engagement. That's super important. And then uh, carefully document 
and this is something yeah i'm not the best documentation documenter whatever the word is you know but you want to make sure like you have exact steps tools commands used um evidence screenshots logs proof of access etc like that's super super important because especially when you're writing a report you want to make sure you have that um that proof to show the client how to remediate and how to mitigate those issues right then you have post exploitation lateral movement and impact oh man my stomach and then um what the company what, what the company actually does right so once we're inside what is the next possible step right privilege privesk we we'll go from a user to a admin to a local domain blah 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 lateral movement from one machine to another however we're going to do that right and then you know you access your sensitive data you know co uh, customer info financial data intellect uh, intellectual property and all that fun jazz so the next thing is reporting in executive presentation and remediation support right so as a pen tester you're yeah you're, you're hacking the systems and doing all that fun jazz but at the end of the day the client is paying for your report right? no matter what you can have 100 percent satisfactory that there's no vulnerabilities no, nothing a lot of the time if you're doing an external network pen test you know, it's it's not you're not going to find too much in, in the real world. You're not going to find crazy, crazy exploits unless they have like an outdated RCE on a firewall or whatever. But most of the time, if you're doing an external, it might just be for a compliance check and you just do your thing and go on with your merry way. So write a professional report with the following. This is something that I do. Right. I have an executive summary, you know, plain English overview right i put plain english because want to make sure we we don't go off on a tangent with the nerdy stuff a uh, business risk uh key findings right the high findings key findings however you want to word it i put key findings uh technical details steps proof of concept tools used screenshots and all that fun jazz for the technical details the risk ratings right critical high medium low etc actionable re uh, remediation guidance like what to do, what to prioritize, right? If you find something really, really high and if an attacker can get a hold of that, takes down your whole system or that app or that product, you wanna make sure they can remediate that first, right? And delivers, you know, we wanna deliver the uh, executive out, um, outreach, for, uh, out, read out, sorry, read out for uh, leadership, Right, technical deep dive for security and IT teams, right? Like you wanna make sure they have their stuff that they need to. And then answer any questions to that the client may have, right? So that's pretty much that. And then I think this is the last thing that I have on my uh, list that we do retesting, like I offer retesting. And then the most important thing is create a long-term partnership, right? Me personally, even when I was running my MSP, I just didn't want to break your or fix your stuff, break fix, and then go on with my merry way, right? I wanted to make sure I had this a relationship with you. So, you know, w what does that mean? Obviously, we have a relationship, but then that partnership can go, you know, re uh, referral to someone else and someone else and blah, blah, blah. So the snowball effect will take place. So the last thing, you know, this is, I, you know, my last step is retesting building the long-term partnership and after all the after the client fixes all their issues we can come back and verify that by retesting and making sure they're actually secure and then remember security isn't just a one-time event it's an ongoing process right we want to make sure that this goes on forever right and if they come out with new products new ser new servers new blah 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 you want to make sure we test those even before they go into production because you don't want them to get compromised. So that's pretty much it. So a structure or a recap of what I talked about is the, um, I guess, steps. Step one to three is like discovery, scoping, contracts, which is all more on the business side. And then you have your kickoff and your reconnaissance. And then you go into your testing, finding vulnerabilities, exploiting, showing impact, etc. And then you're reporting, retesting, and long-term security partnership and relationship with your client so yeah that's pretty much my process as a pen testing firm and doing pen testing for many many years 
So if there's something that I missed that you guys do, please leave it in the comments. I'm super, super stoked to hear what you guys do. And there's always room for improvement, right? This is, this is what I do and uh, love to hear what you guys do. So thank you so much for viewing and I'll see you guys in the next one.